Hey guys, Lucas from Explore here. Today we're going to explore Komagome, which is not a very famous area. It's an area I've only been to myself a few times in my life, um, but we just want to change it up from the big downtown centers like Shibuya, Shinjuku, just to show you guys something different, for better or worse. Um, also, please don't forget to support us on Patreon, or at least click the link and check it out. We have a couple perks. You might get, you know, some of this content early, and of course, it motivates us to produce this content for you guys. So, it's a big help. All right. Also, we are sponsored this time. This video is sponsored by PortraitMode.io, which is a photo sharing website. I've been using it myself for a while now. Um, I just like the like mom and pop shop feel. I'm sure, I've said that before about it. It's just it's just nice to get somewhere to use something that's not this giant corporate you know, mega social media platform like all the ones that we all kind of grew to hate. So get on portraitmode.io, I'll probably see you guys on there. All right, let's get on to the video. I explore. All right, so we're in these not so busy streets of Komagome and I'm probably gonna end up doing a lot of shots like what's right here because we'll see, I mean, how much is going on, but I like these kind of scenes. Oh, and I should mention, I turned on the um, shutter sound, the artificial shutter sound on this camera because it's normally silent. And a bunch of you in the last videos we posted about it suggested that I should turn it on because it's kind of hard to know when exactly I'm taking the photo. And I'll, I'll try it, we'll see how it goes. I honestly find the sound so corny that it's kind of infuriating, this fake sound, but for the purpose of the videos, let's just go with it. And just briefly on the topic of the camera, I got my 14 to 24 today because I don't know, I just felt like using it. I haven't used this lens much as of late because I've been shooting with my 40 a lot. And um, I don't know, I kind of felt its limitations in terms of, you know, the field of view sometimes when, when it's a tight space. So I thought, you know what, I'll bring the ultra wide. And then another thing occurred to me is that this camera has so much resolution, so many megapixels that I could probably shoot on 24 and just crop to a 40 millimeter FOV and I'd still have plenty of resolution left over so yeah maybe maybe this will be my go-to lens for a while yeah and then one more like brief thing i just want to get off my chest is i know i did a bunch of videos about the z9 specifically recently and i talked a lot about it and i got overall it seems like everybody loved those videos you guys found them interesting in many ways um but a couple people were like oh you don't need this camera or this camera is like overkill for street and whatever and i just want to say Look, I, I said it in those videos too. Use the camera that makes you happy, all right? I'm not saying anybody needs this camera or whatever other camera. Choose one that you like and go with it. I happen to like this one for a bunch of reasons that I'm not gonna go into because I've already done that. But yeah, it's a personal choice, right? Okay, let's see. Oh, maybe I'm gonna shoot this, this little pet store, aquarium store here. Although I'll be in the reflection, but I just love their awning. And you see, this is a case where if I had my 40, I would have been a little bit disappointed because I wouldn't be able to get this thing from this distance, from so close. So it's nice having the ultra wide lens with all the flexibility that it offers. So yeah, you can tell it's a very quiet, sleepy residential neighborhood, not a ton going on. And there is like a, what Japanese people call a shotengai that we're gonna go to. It was actually just on the other side of the station from where we started shooting, but I just wanted to go kind of a roundabout way. Yeah, is this truck interesting? Sometimes I kind of like these trucks, these big silver sided trucks. They have this kind of retro vibe, and then there's these people here. That was cute. So yeah, with those people just now, I saw them coming before the, the truck came, and then I figured, okay, they're gonna go around it. So I just kind of waited for that. But that was a nice example of trying to be a little bit predictive when doing street photography. So yeah, as we explore this area, which I figured would be kind of sleepy without much going on, mostly shooting the scenery or the buildings more than the, the street moments or the people, that's what I expected. But I also wanted to talk about something. There's a few things I wanted to mention. And one thing that's just been kind of on my mind recently, and I've been doing photography and street photography for a long, long time now, and um, maybe not as long as, of course, some other people, but it feels like a long time to me, well over 10 years. And, you know, I've seen the city change a lot over that time. And sometimes I kind of wonder, like, well, why am I doing this? What, why do I, and not in a negative way, just like, 
what gets me out to shoot all the time? Like, what, what is so interesting about this? And I try to kind of peel back the layers and really think about it. And I kind of settled on the idea that it's sort of like gambling, street photography. That's, I think, what it is because successes are rare and failures are common. So in a sense, oh, maybe this is a cool scene. Ah, never mind. Not that cool. So, like, su successes are, are rare and failures are common. So it's like sort of an... I'm gonna maybe go down this little street here. But it's like sort of a painful experience. I don't want to say, like, it's not painful. I mean, come on, it's a fun. It's not, when I'm not suffering doing street photography. But it's like, there's a lot of just, like, bad outcomes when doing street photography if you think about the photos themselves. Yet, I'm always motivated to go out and do it more. And I, that's where the, the gambling analogy comes in for me. I feel like that's what, I mean, I'm not a gambler, but I feel like that's what they do, right? They go to the roulette table or the craps table or whatever, and they, they gamble and they lose. But what's exciting is that chance of winning. And that's where it's similar to photography for me. What's exciting and gets me out going out is that chance of winning. This idea that like, well, I don't know what's in Komagome. Oh, here we go, I'm gonna shoot this, this is kind of cool. I like this. Too bad I'm going to be caught in the reflection. So I have to shoot it sort of at an oblique angle. But there's this like mask in there and just this whole facade is really retro. Cool. Not bad. So that kind of, yeah, quest for the unknown or just want to see what's out there. And like maybe today's the day that I get this kick-ass photo. And then inevitably it's not. And that's, I think, that's what I mean, going back to gambling. Like maybe today I'm going to win the jackpot, but inevitably I lose. But the, just the fact that I might, you know, win, that's where the dopamine hits. That's where I'm getting excited. More so, of course you get really excited when you do get a great photo. But again, I don't get those very often. So why am I going out and like kind of quote unquote torturing myself? It's because it's just fun to see what comes, right? To see what might happen. All right, so now we're in this shopping guy that I mentioned, this shopping kind of street with restaurants and whatnot. And we'll see how the side streets feel around here. Okay, we can get a, a shot here. This nice gentleman and the rest of the scene. Okay. I love when like these awnings, they produce this beautiful light like this. Let's let people through. But the sun is coming through that kind of, you know, aqua or like teal colored awning up there. And then the light in here is just gorgeous. I want to get a little closer, eh? but a lot of people going by. Okay. And just the light in the scene to me is just absolutely fantastic. Even though the scene itself is like really, you know, quote unquote boring. But I like it. I like the little plants. I like the color coming from the awning. And then sometimes I like to also shoot up at the awning like this. But in this case, it's not, it's not mega interesting. Again, I just love the light that this, this produces when, when the sun hits it. This is a horse um, restaurant, horse meat. So it says oniku stand, which means meat stand, like standing only, I guess, when you're eating in there. But they focus on horse meat, <laughs> which is, and, it, and it's raw horse meat, as you saw in the picture. So which is kind of a, a little bit of a delicacy in Japan. Like it's not considered the cheap stuff. It's like a little bit better, right? Kind of like sushi or something. So continuing what I was saying about kind of motivations for photography. Why do I photograph? Why do I go out and take photos? Well, so the first reason is, like I said, there's this excitement. It's kind of like gambling. It's this adventure. I also, another analogy, I guess, I, kind of, I liken it to roguelike games. I don't know if any gamers out there, but there are games where like when you die, you got to start over from the beginning, but it's kind of randomized. So each time you play, you're sort of like, Oh, maybe, maybe this time I'm going to get like some, you know, good stuff, good loot, whatever, etc., etc. It's kind of like that. I, I think of it in that way where it's this, you know, this unknown. I don't know what I'm going to get, therefore I'm motivated. But there is a second thing that I realize if I really think about it. There's another reason, let's go this way, that photography excites me. And that's this idea that like, you know, obviously things are changing all the time. Um, especially in Tokyo these days, I'm seeing a lot of change. And so, on the one hand, it feels like photography is sort of like a battle against entropy, you know? <laughs> Things are falling apart and you're trying to sort of save them or preserve them with photos, right? Even, even to me, like this mundane stuff that we're shooting today, these things that are not particularly special, but 
I just have this inclination, so let me shoot something here, to preserve them. Because, I don't know, I just want to. I don't like to see that they will, they will disappear. And that kind of, honestly, like, sort of frustrates me a little bit because you can never save everything. You can't be everywhere at once. You're never gonna get, you know, every person. And then people, of course, are even more precious than the, the buildings and stuff because if you photograph that person at that moment, they will disappear. But then I like to think that, you know, in a way, like, photography helps you, like, celebrate the changes, right? Because if you have the before photo and the after photo, just through that process, change becomes sort of an interesting... Actually, this truck is kind of huge and impressive here. So change becomes this interesting thing. And I guess that's kind of what street photography ultimately is about, in specifically street photography, not photography in general. And that is, um, you know, we're capturing these fleeting moments, right? That don't exist for more than a mo just a second sometimes. And without the camera there, they would just disappear. So that's probably the, the more kind of, you know, deep meaningful thing that motivates me. Let me get a shot here. I like this, uh, this thing with this sauna sign up there. I think it's pretty cool. Again, this is where the ultra wide, honestly, is even a little bit too wide. All right, that's good enough. Keep going. Yeah. And then, you know, besides that reason, of course, I just enjoy photography. I enjoy just being out here, walking around. But strictly speaking, I wouldn't need a camera for that. If I just focused on that aspect of it, that I like being out in the city, I like walking around and exploring, I don't really need a camera for that. So why specifically photography? Why photograph? And again, so it goes back to these two reasons. One is this kind of, you know, dance with entropy, so to speak. And then the other one is this idea of seeking the unknown and going on an adventure. And so that's why we're here in Komagome, which is not exactly the most exciting place in Tokyo on paper, if you just think about it. Like, but you never know, I might, we might find something cool. I think we should cross over on this side, and go into these back streets even more away from the main area. I find my luck is best when I'm well, well away from the main kind of area, even in a small station like this. This building's kind of cool, but I don't know. Let's just shoot it. Yeah, okay. And, you know, you probably can't tell through the, through the video, but it is really hot here today. Really, really hot. I like this open door here with the little plants next to them, next to the door. So over here, I like this, this old building. It's kind of, everything's a little bit crooked and dilapidated. It's just too bad there's like the hedge and the stuff in front of it. It's gonna to be tough to shoot. Not to mention that there's glass, so I would end up in the reflection. But this is maybe where this nice wide lens will come in handy. Yeah, but of course, when I do that, things are a little bit distorted, which I don't like. Let's see if I can shoot it from the front. Yeah, I mean, this this is okay. This is a passable shot for me. Like this. And this is kind of cool. They have this, like, sticker here. These, uh, this pair of eyes. Actually, what is this? Pasta? No, no, whatever. That's just what the restaurant was. But this pair of eyes over here is, um, it's like the neighborhood watch. So it's like these kabuki eyes just watching you. And you see this sticker all over the place. You see it on, like, cars sometimes, you know? It's like a safety, neighborhood safety thing. It's kind of interesting. You see it all over, like I said. You sort of get used to it. Okay. Well, this is a cool, cool building here, like a cool house. It's a nice architecture, this concrete structure. Every once in a while, you see these like really cool designer houses in the residential neighborhoods of Tokyo. How are we gonna shoot this? I'm gonna try to make it like architectural style. Everything straight with the wide lens and then just crop it. Nice, that's a cool building, I like that. So Axel just told me some interesting things. I mean, I, everything he said to me is very logical. I didn't think of it this way, but after he put it this way, it makes total sense. But it's true that a lot of these modern designer homes like this one, I've seen other ones around Tokyo as well. They're often like this, where there's almost no windows and it's very, um, 
like privacy oriented. You know, it's just concrete, and there's very little like going on on the outside of the building, right? And it makes sense, I guess, because Japanese people like privacy. You know, Western people, it's like you're gonna have big windows and you know, kind of make it look open. But here, it's like everything's inside. You can't see in. You kind of have this barrier with the window with the neighbors. But it also makes you wonder, like, do they get any light in there? But I think they do, because there's, there's, it's designed in a way where light will come in like through from above and things. And it seems like they might have some sort of a garden or something somewhere up there as well. I've, at least I've seen other houses like that. Let's see it from the other side. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a kind of a trendy building for the uh, for affluent people who want to build like a nice modern house. There's a little more windows on this side. Yeah. To be honest, I think it's cool. I, would, I wouldn't mind living in a cool house like that. That works for me. I don't know, some people might not like it. Let's see, let's get a nice, again, architectural shot. When I say architectural shot, I just mean that I'm keeping the camera perfectly level, um, which means that like half my frame is just the ground, but I'm just gonna crop it off so that the building looks upright in the scene. Now, of course, I can do that by fixing it in post, but when I have a lens like this, really wide one, Let's go this way. Then um, I just like to do it that way, just 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 for fun. You know, I'm not like a serious architecture photographer where I'm always trying to shoot that way, but it's just nice to have that that option. Hmm. Yeah, that was a cool find in this area. But then it's interesting how then you see the rest of the area around me, and that kind of design, that sort of architecture, really stands out. It's very very, it almost clashes with the area. But that's kind of interesting thing about Tokyo is they don't really have many rules about like, let's go over here, about like what kind of building you can build in what space, you know, does it need to match this style or that style? Like, I'm not so well versed, but I'm sure Kyoto, for example, has a lot more rules about that. Maybe you wouldn't be able to build such a house in certain neighborhoods in Kyoto because it would ruin that, that feeling of it, right? But Tokyo doesn't have that. It's just you build whatever you want, it seems, at least from what I've seen around. And it, it's cool because it makes the area very eclectic and kind of ha having a lot of variety. Okay, I'm just going to get a photo of this blue pipe here with the blue sign. This is one of those, you know, unstreet photos that I like to take. Just this weird geometry. And even here, I'm going to try to shoot it really, really level. So I'm kind of up on my tiptoes to get the geometry of the space rather than distorting it by aiming up. But like I said, although I like exploring these kinds of areas, these Shotengai areas, I don't necessarily find good shots on the Shotengai itself. I always go like a, like a little bit off on these side streets because there's just kind of almost too much going on, on on the main street like that. It's too colorful and busy. And here, what caught my eye is this weird structure, Hamondo. This retro sort of building. Let me get both bits of it because it kind of seems to be two parts to this building. Nice. Let's keep going. Here we go, another old, kind of old house. I love these old houses because they almost, like they're pretty well kept, you know, they're in good, decent condition, but it's like this patchwork of stuff. There's like little bits and pieces that seem like they've been kind of attached almost haphazardly. Yeah, this is cool. And I like how the building is on a curved, curved bit of road. And therefore, it itself kind of fits that curve. And again, I shot it both ways. I did like a normal shot, just pointing up at it. And I did one that was perfectly straight and level. And I love this little kind of curbside garden. Very typical in Japan, people do that. They set up all the plants right on the edge like that. Very cool, nice big house. I wonder if this atrium might make for a cool shot. If I shoot straight up there, because it's kind of open. Oh, it's a chaotic scene. It weird, when I looked through the viewfinder, it was okay, but in the actual, like, result, it kind of grows, grows on me, that scene. Yeah, it was interesting. Some sort of an atrium. All right, guys, so we're almost back to where we started. We kind of, we actually shot on this street earlier, so we'll end it here. Just a quick little foray into, you know, a typical Japanese neighborhood. Not the exciting stuff downtown, but just something normal, regular life. And um, yeah, I hope, I don't know, maybe you guys found my thoughts on 
the motivations for photography interesting. Tell me your motivations. Why do you go out and take photos? What gets you going? Is it just the satisfaction of shooting? Is it the, you know, that you're exploring the world around you? Is it something like what I said or something else? You know, whatever. Let's talk about it. I'm, I'm eager to hear what everybody else is motivated by. All right, guys, so we'll end it there. Of course, please check out our Patreon. Don't forget this video is sponsored by portraitmode.io. Check out that website as well. And um, we'll see you in the next video. And as always, challenge your eye.